Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, about a week or two ago, Douglas and Catherine from the uh, GAA thought that it might be a fun idea, given how everyone is in quarantine right now or sheltering in place, to talk a little bit about some of our uh, travel possibilities going forward. And uh, I've led a number of UNC trips over the years. My name is Peter Coclanis. I'm a member of the history department at UNC, and I also uh, direct the Global Research Institute uh, uh, in Chapel Hill. Uh, but they thought it might be a fun idea to, to talk a little bit about some of the possibilities. I'm leading a couple of trips in 2021, one to the Duro Valley in the fall, and another in the spring in Southeast Asia, where I do a lot of work and I have done a lot uh, of uh, research over the years. Uh, the New York Times had a piece a few days ago about the beginning of the fruit season in Southeast Asia. Southeast Asia has the finest, most delicious fruits in the world, and it was a front page article, and it got me thinking a little bit about Southeast Asia and so I thought I would give a little introduction to uh, a trip that's coming up in the spring in March, uh, which will is a wonderful trip, which captures some of the diversity of Southeast Asia. The trip uh, starts in Singapore, one goes on the uh, Eastern and Orient Express, up through Malaysia to Bangkok, and then uh, you end up uh, flying to uh, Cambodia and to Angkor Wat, uh, uh, which is uh, one of the great temple complexes in the world, a Buddhist temple about 1,200 years old. The town of Angkor uh, and Siem Reap, where it is located today, was about 800 years ago the largest city in the world. So it's a very fascinating place and it captures a lot about Southeast Asia, including the diversity. Uh, Southeast Asia is one of the most incredible places in the world, uh, those of you who haven't been there yet. Uh, it's a real global crossroads. There are 11 countries in Southeast Asia, which is essentially the area uh, south of China and east of India. There are 640 million people. That's twice the United States population and a wide, wide variety of cultures and populations with all kinds of diversity, ethnic, religious, geographical, economic, uh, food, uh, in every possible way. Southeast Asia has been open to outside influences for millennia, really, and the influences of India and China have been great, Islam, and then the West, really, from the 16th century on, when the Portuguese and the uh, uh, Dutch, the British, uh, the French came into the area. Uh, it really is one of the most incredible places in the world. And Singapore, where I've spent uh, an incredible amount of time since the early 90s, is really the epicenter of this entire area. Uh, and we'll start this trip in Singapore. Singapore, with only about 6 million people, a little less than that, uh, in an area just a little bit bigger than New York City, uh, the five boroughs of New York City, is uh, one of the really, really interesting places uh, on earth, at least in my opinion. It's one of the wealthiest, as you probably know, some of you probably have seen Kevin Kwan's movie, Crazy Rich Asians, last year and saw the incredible wealth there. But it is also uh, a place with among the highest living standards in the world, the longest life expectancies in the world, the lowest infant mortality rates in the world, uh, a place with uh, the best schools in the world in terms of student standardized test scores, that type of thing. Uh, it is extremely safe, uh, great diversity, great food, great public transportation, the world's best airport, and uh, in the middle of this incredibly uh, interesting area. Still, when we think in the United States of Singapore, people don't really always understand or, uh, the real richness of this area. And that's one of the things I like to convey uh, when I talk about Singapore, either to students uh, at uh, academic conferences or on uh, 
JA trips, and I've led one uh, to Singapore in the past. Singapore is often depicted as a kind of rich, but a little weird, uh, an odd little place that's slightly dull, a little bit off the charts, maybe a standard deviation or two away from the rest of the world. And it is the subject of lots of stereotypes, uh, some of which, like all stereotypes, are true. But in my view, they are a little uh, outdated. And they present a rather monochrome vision of what is an increasingly interesting, complicated, and exciting society. In the West, when I ask Americans in particular, what do you, what do you know about Singapore? What do you think you know? or what comes to mind. Now, if you're of a certain age, say you're over 50 or so, one of the things that comes to mind vaguely is a celebrated case from the early 90s when an American youth named Michael Fay was caned by the government for scratching uh, a car with a key. He was doing an act of vandalism and Americans thought that this was a, you know, a, an extreme act for something as little as that. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about why it wasn't so little as that later on. But there are lots of other things people like to joke about Singapore and think it's a kind of weird place. Um, there are uh, bumper stickers and t-shirts in, uh, in Singapore that say things like, Singapore is a fine city. There are fines for this and fines for that, fines for spitting, you fines, fines for chewing gum, fines for littering, fines for loitering. And there are uh, lots of uh, rules in Singapore even today. Uh, some people argue that Singapore has a cleanliness fetish. They're constantly sweeping up and cleaning up and uh, making sure that there's, the place is as spotless as possible. Some people comment on the fact that, the, that homosexuality is legally prohibited in Singapore even today. Some people think that the government is repressive, even semi-authoritarian, with not a lot of free speech. The novelist William Gibson, writing in the early 90s, uh, he wrote a piece in the magazine Wired, an article on Singapore, in which he called the place, and this is kind of stuck, he said it's Sing Singapore is akin to Disneyland with the death penalty. And lots of people in the West have, uh, that's resonated with them and that image has stuck with them. Now I've spent a lot of time in Singapore over the years, as I've said, and while there is a grain of truth in a lot of what I've just said, it's a much different place than that rather crude, oversimplified, oversimplified uh, view suggests. And again, if you've seen Crazy Rich Asians, uh, you've captured a little bit more of what was really going on there. It's actually an increasingly vibrant place with a very, very rich cultural life uh, across the board. It has uh, an excellent symphony. There are all kinds of concerts, uh, dance, art galleries, art museums, and other types of museums all over the place. It has a rich nightlife for the younger set with lots of uh, discos and bars and things like that. There are two casinos in Singapore. Uh, prostitution is legal in Singapore, um, which surprises many people. It's increasingly pluralistic politically and is opening up uh, incredibly rapidly right now. Uh, there's an upcoming election in the second week of July, which uh, should be the most open and closely contested in a long time in Singapore. Uh, and by the way, you can chew gum in Singapore. You just can't buy gum in Singapore. That's the, uh, there's a little bit of an uh, uh, asterisk there about the chewing gum. In my lectures on Singapore and on Southeast Asia, I try to... Uh, render the place a little bit more complicated and uh, than that traditional view of Singapore. And I think that every visitor to Singapore uh, understands this straight away and they grow to love Singapore. One of the great things about it, again, is that it is green, safe, and totally interesting. You could go out any time of the day or night uh, alone and uh, you'll have no problems. Uh, the whole area, I think, is really uh, an underappreciated world asset. Uh, Southeast Asia is one of the most dynamic 
areas in the entire world. And the diversity of Southeast Asia is unparalleled. In this area of 11 different countries, you have some of the most dynamic world cities uh, on earth. That is to say places like Bangkok and Singapore. You have uh, developing countries uh, uh, like Vietnam, Indonesia. You have relatively uh, less developed countries uh, where you can uh, still feel uh, like you're almost going back in time. Places like Laos, uh, Burma, picture behind me on the wall is a wooden bridge in, uh, in Burma or Myanmar. Uh, and this area of the world is, as I said, incredibly interesting. Uh, there's nothing like it in my view. And as the Times points out, that has some of the best fruit in the world, uh, in addition to some of the best uh, foods of other types as well. It's one of the real dynamos of the world, and I think increasingly in the future, we are gonna see more and more action there. Geopolitically, it's in the most, one of the most strategic uh, arenas in the entire world, uh, as, uh, you know, as, uh, because of its propinquity to both India and China, it is on the most important sea lane in the world, that is to say this area around the Straits of Malacca, which is the shortest distance between Asia and the West, and Singapore has been a, a, a global uh, node for a thousand years in some ways, but uh, certainly over the last 200 years uh, since the British came to the island in 1819. Um, Southeast Asia as a whole, and this I'll leave you with, uh, has half the population of India, but a bigger G GDP or bigger product than India. People talk about India all the time and its geopolitical importance and its cultural diversity and its richness and its liveliness. But I think Southeast Asia uh, is more than a match for both India and China. And I would invite all of you uh, not only to think about this possible trip, but to think about uh, taking a, a trip of your own out there at some time in the future. Uh, one of the great things about this part of the world is that it's safe. Uh, there are lots of cheap uh, air flights uh, around the region and accommodations uh, at every level, whether luxury to uh, kind of a hostile level are all relatively inexpensive by world standards. So uh, I hope you're, quarantining or sheltering in place comfortably and i look forward to seeing you on one or another of a ga trips in 2020 21 or sometime thereafter uh, stay safe everybody